Hey guys, GOTLG fan here, and welcome back to another video. So today, welcome back to r slash malicious compliance. So I have five stories for y'all. This, this is going to be more um, just rapid fire, because I have other videos to record today. So let's start with the first one. Uh, professor, you want... A one-page assignment? I'll give you a one-page assignment. Don't worry, no hard feelings were caused. For context, for a previous assignment, I had to research a topic, so I made an 11-page document. I admit it, I did have a lot of extraneous info, though. I didn't want to print it, so I emailed it to my friend to present it on her iPad. When I presented my submission, the professor was confused, so he wanted all of us to redo the assignment, this time only one page. So I had an idea. I simply exported a PDF of my original document with all 11 pages on a single sheet with the feature in, Acro in Adobe Acrobat where you can print multiple pages on one sheet that I called my prank file. Don't worry, I also made a legit submission that was shortened to two pages. The professor was okay with it. I emailed both files to my friend, then instructed her to open the prank submission first. Then right as the professor becomes disappointment or disappointed in my work to pull up my actual submission next. Today I go to class eagerly to wait as I see my friend open the prank file and show it to my professor. We all laugh and he commented on how tiny the text was. Then she opened my actual submission and I presented that work. He congratulated me on completing the assignment. What a day. Wow, you did all that work and you still <clears throat> pranked your teacher? Which is awesome by the way. I wish I had the balls to prank my teacher. Good job, OP. Good job. Professor demands we stick to the schedule. We stick to the schedule. This was last year. In hindsight, I feel a little bad for the professor. He wasn't the worst I'd ever had, but, uh, and he was up against the university, which was in turmoil behind the scenes and spearheading an untested new course. That being said, I'm paying quite exorbitantly for this education. And he was a right snot about this, so eh. It was a history course, and one of the assignments was a group project where we presented in front of the class. We had a three-hour seminar taking place in the lecture hall, the last hour of which was reserved for two groups to go up and present a half hour per piece. This one involved a Q&A session afterwards. Just to keep us on our toes, I suppose. Professor really emphasized that we pick the week and topic we're going to present in, and that's that. It's first come, first serve, and if you miss your spot, you get a zero. Thought nothing of it at the time. Seemed fair. Didn't like his attitude, but whatever, right? Well, I won the lottery with the group I was assigned. They were... Grand lads with a dream to work with. We decided on an advantageous week to present, given our schedules. And we have spent the run-up fine-tuning this presentation and really getting it to work. We used a stopwatch and everything. We even brought in outsiders to ask questions that we might not predict. All was well. Except we were presenting in week five and a disturbing pattern had emerged during the seminars in weeks 2, 3, and 4. For all this talk about keeping things con constrained and everyone working within a schedule, whoever went second was screwed. The first group always ran long, and the second group had to make do with, at most, 20 minutes. You could see the stress on their faces. So come week 5 and the rest of my group, a little bit more nervous than I am, Worries about whether all of our careful planning will be for the pot. I decided to throw a, a Hail Mary thinking that the worst I could do is get a no, right? 
So I get up right before class starts and ask the professor, what are the odds uh, we might go on our first out of the two? After all, we're sure, or we're sure we have this down to 30 minutes. The dude proceeds to rake me across the coals in front of everyone. It was a normal speaking voice, but the podium was right by the door and people were filling in. Tells me not to ask such a stupid question and go back to my seat. I go back, tail between my legs, pissed off and sit with steam shooting out of my ears for the next two hours. Sure enough, the other group goes first and sure enough, they run long. We shoot concerned looks at our professor who was too busy watching the other group notice. Come 50 minutes in, and the first group is just about wrapping up. The guys in my group are silently freaking out about this. Nightmare, right? That's when the professor stands up, polite applause all around, and then says, Well, I guess we're finishing early today, huh? Like a scene out of a courtroom drama, the four of us stand up like a shot and ask what the hell is going on. He can't quite hear us from back, and we're all talking at once, so... He asks what is going on. I charge down those steps like King Kong. In the same tone of voice in front of the same door the people are now filing out of, I tell this guy that we are booked for the assignment today and we have something prepared. What? Tur turns out he totally plumb forgot that we were presenting today. And that's why he was so mad at my suggestion earlier. So I tell him we're presenting now to an empty room or he's giving us a hundred. The poor guy sure did try. Insisted we, we hadn't signed up this week. We had. Insisted he could schedule us in the next week. Even assuming two or four of our group weren't away on placement for the teaching degree. We booked for this week as ordered insisted <clears throat> excuse me he had somewhere to be not my problem mate dude just had to wear it after making a phone call to presumably his next appointment he had to stand there while well as white as a sheet and wear it i'll never forget the look on his face so we presented to a lecture hall empty of all but the professor and two students who I guess wanted to see more of the show. We got a grade to boot. That story was a roller coaster. The third story of this video is just tap there. Just tap there, said the cashier as they ignored me and the cash in my outstretched hand as they pointed to the credit card machine. After a few seconds of being told repeatedly, over there, papi. <laughs> I took them up on their word. I slapped the money against the card reader and said loud enough for everyone to hear, Hey, this machine isn't working. Maybe if I try sliding it through. Nope, still not working. Maybe you can do better. The other customers had witnessed how rudely I was being treated. They burst out laughing when the cashier finally looked at me and grabbed the money out of my hand. A few more cash bank customers imitated <laughs> imitated me laughing at that cashier increasingly getting upset oh my gosh shit i worked at a gas station for two years and i never done that next story exact change i was a cashier in college and a lady and her friend were talking in my line and being dismissive i rang her up and told her the total she handed me the cash and was 50 cents short i said ma'am is 50 more cents. She rolled her eyes and said, I want to pay cash, and went back to talking to her friend. I said, yes ma'am, do you have 50 more cents? She turned toward me and very slowly condensed, 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 I know English, condensed, con, con, that word said, I want to pay with cash, and pointed at what she handed to me. Yes ma'am and hit the cash button and entered the amount she gave me. I politely said, okay, your total is 50 cents. 
How would you like to pay for that? She realized what happened and got embarrassed and said, I have 50 cents. To her friend's credit, she was laughing at her. <laughs> the last story I have for you all today is a not too long story. Might as well end along, huh? <laughs> Boss was reluctant to do anything about Deadweight co-worker because he wasn't making obvious mistakes. We decided to make it obvious. We had this co-worker on our team. The best way to describe him was to use a Homer Simpson line. Everyone says they have to work a lot harder when I'm around. That's more like a Patrick Starr line that I that than a Homer Simpson line, but they sound the same. Anyway, projects even given to him usually were not completed correctly or not entirely completed or not even worked on at all. He violated security protocols. Excuse me. Gave out equipment to... Ruben, cut that burp out, please. Gave out equipment to other departments and would occasionally disappear for hours. He would always have someone... Er, he would always have someone else to blame for his problems. Contractors, staff, and other departments. But the last straw for the rest of us was when he tried to throw his own team under the bus. We all knew he was skating by because we'd fix his mistakes to keep everything else running. And admittedly, it's hard to get fired from a state job. But after blaming us and having to hear about it, that was the last straw. So the rest of us on the team stopped helping him and we stopped fixing his mistakes. He wasn't making obvious mistakes before, but now they were obvious. The mistakes were piling up and fast. We could collaborate with him only down to the bare minimum. We ha he had no reason to blame us if our contributions to a project were completed and his weren't. And then came the kiss of death. He took a week off. With him not around, everything that piled up started getting completed by the rest of us. New tasks were completed on top of that, and on time. Even my boss could not ignore the simple fact that the place ran smoother without him around. After he returned, everything started piling back up again. So we came into work a couple weeks ago, and it was announced that he had left the organization. No one person was surprised. The thing that amazes me about this whole thing is that nobody coordinated it. None of us hatched the plan. We all just individually decided that enough was enough. You wanted obvious? You got it. It is impressive how much it takes to get fired for some people. My last two jobs both featured team a teammate who essentially collected a paycheck and did nothing in return. At least my manager here had the balls to do what was needed. It's also amazing that in the end, there is less work to do with him gone. Because tasks don't need to be done twice anymore. Wow. That is about it for this subreddit video, you guys. If you enjoyed it, click or tap that like button and subscribe for more. I did get a new microphone, so hopefully the audio quality is good. If not, oh well. I'll fix it for the next video. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, and yeah. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!